Welcome to Wooden Work Podcast. I'm Josh from Josh Taylor Woodworking and this is Paul from JCR Joinery. And today we are talking about tools. Yes, you are one. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, I couldn't resist. (laughs) Uh, Alright, let's let's all right, so to start us off, Paul. What, where are we at with um, today's Good first tool. topic? I mean, we we very briefly, I think, in one of our previous episodes, we said about you know, are you sort of like to start with? Are you actually sort of like to one set of tools, uh, you know, one platform? Because obviously, some people only buy Dewalt, only buy Makita, only buy Milwaukee. Um, personally, I I mean, I'm mainly Festool. Um, I do actually have some Dewalt. I have some Ryobi. Because I buy the best tool that I think is available for that job, rather than I don't just stick to one brand, because I don't believe that any one brand can buy or can make sorry the best tools in every single category, because electricians don't have power when they're on site. They need something a bit more different than what a finished joiner will need. So I mean that's my belief. I mean do you, I mean I think you said you started off with a big Makita toolkit when you first started out, Josh. You started off with a big Makita kit, you said, Josh, when you first started out? Yeah, yeah, started with Makita, um, only because a builder that I worked with out here said, everyone's got Makita, so get Makita and you can always swap batteries at work. So I was like, oh yeah, why not? Um, and that was the start of it, but now, being in in the game for seven years, like you kind of know what tool brands do what. Like Mikita is real good for carpentry. They do a lot of uh, like you know you find some good like carpentry tools. Milwaukee's sort of more construction-y based, so sort of like yeah. similar to Hilti, more of a good rugged construction. Uh, I find DeWalt's a bit of a mix, carpentry slash construction. Obviously, Festool's more just joinery, a pure joinery brand, and and the best, the best of the best. I don't know if there's if there's any other cheaper brands out there like similar to Festool, where they just ultimately do most joinery tools. Do you know? Do you know no. anyone? I mean, Metabo do some good tools, but again. They're not the, there are the odd ones that I know that I think the table saw, the site table saw, a few people got the Metabo. Oh, Do you yeah. know the one that's about, about two foot square, give or take? Yeah, I know. Um, and the people I knew actually sent it back because it was um, that bad. Um, I'm just having a coffee delivery here, people. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, and um, yeah, so. A few people I know actually did, unfortunately, send it back because it wasn't very good. But I know that the some of the Metabo sanders are, are quite well rated, and so you know that's, that's why I don't think that any one brand. But I mean, obviously, then this brings us to another good conversation. Actually, that obviously when you're first starting out, whether it be as a hobbyist woodworker or a, in the construction trade as a joiner, electrician, or any trade, it doesn't make any difference. You obviously can't afford to be going buying the top festival or whatever and you know people get put off because of the price point because obviously the the extreme price in relation to some other brands so not necessarily talking brands here per se but what sort of tools would you sort of say as you sort of maybe your top five that you would recommend if you were starting out that you sort of need i'm not talking about your basic hand tools like hammer or saw what sort of tools would you sort of say or items would you say it's worth you really need one of these they really change the way you can do stuff or the way you can work yeah 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 that's a great question so for me if i was starting again you know for you know 
if it depends on what you want to get into, like if it's whether it's residential carpets or joinery, let's just say like joinery furniture making, you know, the high end stuff, I would be it would be a track saw, a thickness saw. Obviously, your standard set of drills that you need. You know, obviously, you get your pair, your impact, and your uh, normal drill. A plunge router. A real good sander. The, the best one you can buy. Uh, that's five. I've got one more because I couldn't leave it out. And a drop saw. Drop saw? You mean like a magic, like a, a magic sword, do you mean? Yeah, yeah, they call them drop saws. <laughs> is that what they yeah, call yeah, them yeah. in England now? <laughs> My, so, oh, how's yeah, it? Correct name is Magic Saw. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, you know the what? Uh, yeah. Yeah, cost uh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so. No, mate. Yeah, drop saw makes sense still. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. So that, that's that's my six. The track saw, when I got it, like, improved, mate, took me from a, you know, seven out of ten to a ten out of ten on my neatness. Because it's just the precision is just unreal. Obviously, thickness is really handy. Speed you can speed speed up. You can thickness all your stuff to um, the dimension you want. You need your drills. Your plunger is important because you could you know you can put all your bits on there. It's very versatile. Obviously, sander because half the job sanded. <laughs> And then, yeah, your mitre slash drop saw, um, just for, again, neatness, and it's quite versatile with your degrees and that. So that's my six, if I were to start again and um, get into the trade. What about you? That's in it's sort of interesting to me. Again, I mean, my top one I've put down as a plunge saw. Again, um, I got my first. I mean, I first saw the festival plunge saw, which was actually called Festo originally, and uh, that yeah. was about 15, 20 years ago, maybe. <laughs> um, you showed your age here now, <laughs> right? But I was a bit, I was doing a refit at the what we were refitting at the Hilton hotels, and a Dutch firm came over to do the fitted wardrobes, and. We were blown away by seeing this plunge saw. I was like, oh, this will never catch on. This will never catch on. Oh, really? Again, <laughs> yeah, we did. And then, I think it was about seven, eight years ago, I actually bought a plunge saw for the first time. And I, I did buy the Festool TS55. And my God, it changed everything. Yeah. Um, it really does change what you can do for breaking down sheet materials. You don't necessarily need... A table saw. I mean, I know that Peter um, Mallard, uh, ten minute workshop at the minute on YouTube, um, is doing a little series of uh, only making items with track saws. So he, he's showing the versatility of the track saw because it it just really is one of the best tools. So again, I'm not saying you have to go and buy the best tool. Um, buy the best one you can buy. What the best tool you can afford though? Um, I think pe some people said the Craig one's okay. Um, which is more the budget end. Um, but again, a lot of these is, it's not just about the saw. Make sure you use a good blade in the saw and the correct blade for what you're cutting. Um, I see a lot of conversations on social media, people saying, oh, my saw's crap, my saw's this. Like, well, what, what blade are you using? Well, I'm using whatever, but well, that's not the right blade. If you're not using the right blade for the correct material or the correct, correct type of cut, it's going to be crap. It's going to be shit. You're going to get tear out. You're going to get blow out. It's going to blunt quickly if you're using a 48 tooth saw on hardwood. You don't do that. So it's about, it's not also about always about the, having the best tool. It's about understanding how you can get the best out of that tool that you have um, and using the correct items. Um, so, um, so just hang on a second. What tooth, how many teeth do you need for hardwood? Because I don't actually know. That I've just been cutting with my my standard saw blade that come with my Festool TS fifty five. I've been cutting everything with that. Right, okay, so that's one problem a lot of people make, and it, <clears throat> so one problem is people try and cut the full depth in one go. Yeah, don't do that. 
always do it in two to three passes, especially if you're cutting, like, say, a 40 mil worktop, for example. So if you're doing hardwoods, you want to use, I think Festool call it the Cougar blade. So generally these blades are around 12 teeth to 16 teeth. Yeah. So it's quite a few teeth in comparison. Um, the other good thing, sorry, the very important thing that a lot of people do, and it drives you mad, use the correct size blade for your saw. Do not take out the rivy knife if your saw has a rivy knife. Use the correct curve for your saw because when you don't follow these three important rules, you lose fingers. And the amount of people I see just take the rivy knife out and put a different blade in. No, don't do that. Use the correct blade, correct thickness, and the correct tooth. So you can so take like, you can take that rivy knife out and put a bigger blade in. I've... People do, and it's da- only by five mil, but it's dangerous. Don't do it. So <clears throat> and it really annoys me. People, I see people do it on the Dewalt sites and all that. Take out the rivy knife. People don't do it. It is a stupid, stupid bit of advice. If your saw has a rivy knife, leave it there. It's there for a reason. Okay. Anyway, back to the blades. So <clears throat> if you're doing general ripping with the grain, and now softwoods, you can get away with it to a point with hardwoods. You want like a 24-tooth blade. Yeah. So this is like your mid-range blade. If you're doing a cross-cut, especially for things like plywood, and as you know, I work a lot with plywood, <clears throat> you actually want to use a 48-tooth blade or... I believe CMT do a 52-tooth blade. Um, yeah. CMT blades are also very good. You can use Froud, Steely Blades, or whatever brand, as long as you're the correct size. Um, but then if you're doing like a high gloss panel, like a base end for a kitchen decor, or those sort of things, you want something called a triple chip blade, which is basically a 48-tooth, but it has like an extra little curve on the blade that helps with the not delaminating the surface. People use cement boards for tiling um, mainly, or like the water boards, the hardy backing boards, I think they're called. You can buy a cement blade for this. This is a four-tooth blade. So again, you use that for cutting. So if you actually look on the lid of your TS-55, if you have a Festool, there is actually a picture which tells you what blade and colour, because they have a colour in the centre of the blade, to use for what, what types of circumstances. Oh, but yeah, okay. it is very important to use the correct size blade Crep curve and you know the actual crep blade because <clears throat> you'll get a cleaner cut. So, if you try and use a 48 tooth blade to do a long rip, yes, it will go through with the grain, but it won't be as efficient and you'll burn out the saw blade quicker. Now, these blades aren't cheap, they're what about 50, 50 pounds, I think, for a blade. Um, so buy three blades, have different blades for different tasks, swap them out as you need. It takes a minute to change a blade. And you actually get more for your value. And of course, you can get these blades resharpened. So they're not actually expensive because they're a consumable anyway. It's a saw blade. It's a consumable. What, how many different blades do you have for your TS-55? Um, I have... Well, I've actually got the battery saw and then I've got the plunge saw in the table saw. So I've actually got the 2.2 curve and the 1.8. So I have the Cougar, the 24 tooth, the 48 and the triple chip for each saw and I probably have a couple of certain blades because I just sometimes I'll buy a pack of two rather than a pack of one or whatever so I've probably got 10 saw blades for the two plunge saws easy <laughs> I need to buy some more blades I've only got one yeah. <laughs> it's a good lesson yeah, it's a good so lesson you see you all have been learning and, you know it's not that you can't cut with that 48 I think it's a 40 I think it's a 46 tooth in the original festival saw so. And uh, it's not that you can't cut everything with that. You can, but it's not the correct blade for doing all the substrate. So, you know, a lot of these things, are, to get the best out of your tools, you want to use the correct item. Um, one of the other things that I think is really important, that, I mean, it's not the be all end all, is a decent tape measure. I personally like the Fisco or the Tajami ones. I mean, yeah, oh, they're, yeah. About £30 for, they're about £30 for a tape measure. But again, when you're marking... And everything is accuracy in joinery. As long as you use the same tape to measure something and then cut it, it doesn't matter because it'll be the same. But I do find a good quality tape measure will last. I mean, if you look after your tools anyway, you've got, I mean, I do. Um, I think the Fisco one I've got now, the, the numbers are getting a little bit battered, they're a bit worn. I think I've had it for two years. So 
30 quid over two years is not expensive when I use it every single day. What's it called? Fisco. Fisco. F-I-S-C-O. Have you got um, one there with you now? Or? I don't think I have. I think it's in my work pants. No, it's in my work pants from yesterday, I think. Oh, okay. The one I've got is a red and black uh, one. I haven't got it. Uh, my next thing is chisels. Don't buy cheap crap chisels. That, that, that. That sums it up. Um, what is, I find, a really good set, and I don't say, I wouldn't say they're expensive. Um, I've got these Norex chisels behind me on the, on the wall. I think these are the 8104s. Two, three, four, five, six. So there's about seven in the set. Um, and I think these are only about £80. £10 each. So, I mean, they were enough. I think they're just over £100 at the minute. Uh, but again, yeah, Worth every penny. Look after your chisels. Sharpen them before every use. Just give them a quick little tickle. You get more out of them. Um, don't go buying crap chisels. It's a false economy. I mean, I would really like to get some nice Japanese chisels, but you're looking at you know over £100 per chisel on them. And I can't quite bring myself to that level at the minute because I don't use them that much. Um, one thing, another thing as well, a, a little bit of lie with the tape measure, is buy good squares. And good marking gauges. Um, and a mark by a marking gauge, I'm talking about. Let's see if we've got one here. So if you're marking out stuff, I've got a little Veritas one here. It's only about thirty pounds for marking your know, details. Um, I've got different ones for mortises. Um, I've got direct squares on the wall. Um, but what one thing I've actually seen, and I think it was a London craftsman on YouTube's on a review. Um, and he's done a, a view on, I have actually got a couple here. I've got one here is off Bang Good uh, one of the Chinese websites now they're, very, they're obviously made to look very much like a certain American tool brand and um, but to be honest they are Bang Square made from aluminium they're really good they're not expensive I've also got some clamps off them for doing corner units for glue ups which come um, I've had no problems with the clamps, but yeah, clamps, marking gauges, um, buy decent ones, um, well worth every penny. And my last one is one that you said as well, actually, is sander. Buy the best possible sander you can buy. Um, it makes all the difference. People don't think it does, it does. And when you're spending an entire day sanding, you also want to, I mean, I've only got the five inch Rotex, um, six inches on my, on my list of things to get next because not a lot of people realise this, that a five inch sander of 125 mil six inches 150 mil people don't realise that a 150 mil sander has 33% more su surface area for sanding than the five inch version, everyone thinks it's an extra inch it's not, it's 30% bigger because it's the extra inch all the way around the outside. Yeah, it when you spend... cuts your, your sanding time down by 30%, I'd say, wouldn't you? It does, actually. It's ridiculous. But buying a good sander, um, you want one. If you're going to get a general... I mean, this sort of brings me into the, another conversation, I think, as well, though. You know, what tools would you never be without? Now, you've got them all. But, and one for me is the Rotex, because it's got the geared modes and also the fine finish modes. So you want a fine finish sander, you know, about three mil stroke. Um, but a geared road, a, a geared sander, sorry, is a great investment. Um, they act very much in the same way of maybe as a belt sander, where they're designed to take off as much of material as, as possible in one go. Um, so the Rotex is brilliant. But again, I know it's out of a lot of people's budget. Um, and... I know from, I've got a friend that does renovation work on kitchen worktops mainly. So he gets like the old wooden worktops that are destroyed and he brings them back to life. Uh, DB Powell Repairs Restoration on Instagram. And um, yeah, I think he's got the Bosch geared sander and he, he says it's brilliant. I know Metabo do a geared sander, which is meant to be very good as well. So you don't always, as I say, this brings us back to, you don't always have to have the top tools or you know, the top brands. There yeah. are all the brands out there that do do as good a job, or certainly for because <clears throat> I always look at something and say, Is it worth X amount of pounds? Is it worth X amount of pounds? And of course, some things you, you look at, um, you know, 
you can say any brand. No, it's not worth X amount of pounds because it's not to you because you're not going to use it every day. If I'm using a thousand pound saw every day, it's worth every penny. So, but for the person that's the hobbyist, it's not worth thousand pound because that hundred pound one will probably do them. Mm. So, I mean, for me, the Rotex is one of the best purchases um, I think I made. One of the, I mean, both said plunge saw. I would never be without a plunge saw ever again. I think they're amazing. Um, one of my little tools I love as well, I won't be without, is a little Craig marking jig gauge. Um, it's just a little simple marking, about 20 quid. Very simple. Lives in a work pants. I love that. Um, but the other thing is the Festool Domino. I absolutely love the Festool Domino. Um, it does have its limitations, obviously. I've only got the smaller DF500. Um, but yeah, I would... A Domino is so good. Um, absolutely love it. It does open up a whole world of possibilities with certain things, you know, for cabinetry. Um, what tools would you, would you say now that you wouldn't be without? Like your your, your favourite tools, if you like. Mm. My favourite tools that I wouldn't be without. Um, yeah, uh, you know, your track saw, your plunge saw. Again, top of the list. Um, actually, what for for the price point and for what it can do, you know, your little Makita DeWalt um, Milwaukee trimmers. Oh, yeah. yes. I think the trimmers are brilliant. Yeah, that's a good call. Because it's small, it's a few hundred dollars, a few hundred quid or whatever, 150 quid or whatever, and you've got so many different uh, attachments you can put on it, which is, it, it's a lot, it's versatile, you know, for the for the money you're paying, so that'll be one. That's a very good call, that is, very good call. Uh, what else? Um, uh, again... I haven't actually purchased one. I've still got the, the Festool Reps one, but uh, the Fest, uh, the Rotex, he hasn't come and picked it up yet. I've, I've messaged him, but he's obviously busy. Uh, yeah, no. I would eventually have to buy one when he does come and pick it up. But yeah, that that thing is just crazy. Like the way when you're in the geared mode, the way it just removes the material. I went from using a battery. Makita sander, orbital sander, 125. Was that just that little palm sander you had? Yeah, I, and then I went, when I went to the Festal Rotex and I was just doing, it was probably cut 70% of sanding time from a, a little battery-powered Makita to the Festal Rotex with a good, you know, a nice pad on it, and with you know, with the holes in. The breathable pads connected to the vacuum or Hoover, wherever it depends where you're on the world, and the pads just last so long, you know. That's so that's that's one I'm gonna have to uh, bite the bullet. But I did look at the um, the competitor to it, which is the Bosch one that has the geared sanding mode, half the price. I see a lot of good reviews on that. Yeah, that's what my mate's got. He, he does like it. But again, I'll probably stick with Festool as, you know, after it was just a nail in the coffin when you said I've had them, you know, 10, 15 years and nothing's broke yet. So, yeah. I mean, my friend, my friend Rob, he's, he said he's got the Bosch geared sand that you just mentioned then. And he's the guy that does all the work tops. And he has actually said that although it is a great sander and he loves it and he's had. It's done him very well. Um, he's buying a Rotex because it is a step up. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I suppose what what else? What else? What else? And um, yeah, probably uh, the Festool vacuum, the Festool Hoover, just yeah. for. Like my workshop's not covered in bloody dust half the time because obviously everything connects, all the festival connects to it, so everything's a lot less dusty and a lot more clean. You know that's and again they're expensive. I have um, I have 
two, two, two I've got three of Hoovers. Uh, I've got the Festool, which is obviously for my fine carpentry work. Joinery. Is that the, MIDI, <laughs> the MIDI or the CT? The, the, I think it's the MIDI with the, I think it's like the 15 litre. Um, yeah, it's a MIDI, yeah. Same as mine then. Then I've also got the Ryobi wet and dry vac. That's just, just a, that's just a hammer away at work for any crap, dusty work I'm doing. Because I don't put concrete, uh, concrete dust through the festival vac. Many times people have asked me at work, oh, can you just, can you connect the, uh, connect the saw to the, or they ask me to hoover up, you know, dusty concrete in the bathroom. And I'm like, no, I'm not, yeah. I'm not doing that. I paid a lot of money for that. I'm only putting timber through that vacuum. Obviously, it is built for that, but... And then my last vacuum I got is a Makita handheld one, which is actually great if you're just doing a few small little jobs in a client house or whatever. It's quickly plug in, carry in, and it's just uh, nice and movable. So, yeah, that's, that's me, I guess, with all the... The tools I would live without. Hoover, Vacuum. trimmer, plunge saw, top three. Yeah. yeah, I think they were a good call. I mean, so obviously, like many of us, we use YouTube for learning new skills, tricks, or research these days. What sort of um, what channels do you, would you recommend it, or the channels you enjoy watching? Um, I mean, I'm not talking about your. Um, Pornhub ones. I'm talking about you know, the, 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 carpen, the carpentry. Um, I've actually got a subscription channels. to that one. <laughs> <laughs> yes, what, what YouTube channels do you like or recommend um, to, you know, generally, you know, again, woodworkers in general, what, 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 which ones do you like watching? All right. So I've got, I've got a lot on, on YouTube, right? But I've narrowed it down to two. Because some of the YouTube channels that you watch, some's woodworking and some's like woodworking slash entertainment, if you know what I mean. It's more like, it's a, like a show. But these one, the two that I've got is just solid, two solid woodworking channels. Um, first one is where it all started with me, a lot of inspiration from it, which is Blacktail Studios. Yeah, His like stuff's it. great. He's pretty much... I, all his videos are very similar, but I still watch them all. You know, I'm still in there, and you pick up a little nugget of wisdom, you know, through through it. And probably, you know, my number one most rated for best craftsman slash uh, YouTube. This guy doesn't even speak in any of his videos. This is how good is what like is editing, filming, and pieces are, is called Padula Studios. He's got, literally, how many videos has he got? And he's just absolutely smashed it. I think he's got one, but three, six, nine, twelve, eighteen. He's got 20 videos, and in 20 videos, you know, he's got 173k subscribers. Wow, I need some of that. <laughs> you do, mate, I'm sorry you're right, but, but this guy, his editing is just amazing he and he's never spoke he spoke in one video which was his second to last video he put out just said i guess you might as well i might as well say hello I've, you know i've been uploading for years and he just puts he's actually based in sydney here somewhere because i see i see him say it but yeah his woodworking is crazy and he just like his last video was with he was doing the the vacuum compression. Have you seen that at all? Oh yeah, with the, uh, vac bags for sealing, like uh, vac bags seal it, and they can like they bend oh, the timber. Yeah, the forms. yeah. So yeah, that's my two solid woodworking channels. If you really want to learn and not, you know, sort of there for the entertainment, it's just you learn a lot from them too. What about what about you? What have you got? Yeah, so that's interesting. Because a couple of the ones that I'd say that I used to watch all the time have, now they've become full-time content creators, and that's all they do is YouTube. 
they have become, as you say, a bit more of a entertainment, a little bit more. Yeah, as you say, I think I think you're right is, there because they're actually moving. So again, I still watch the videos, but I prefer. And again, it was actually on a conversation I had on a, another Zoom meeting the other week, or this last week. And people are saying, where the hell have all these build videos gone? I'm like, well, actually, I've got six on the, in the pot here waiting to go out, so I've got some ready. <laughs> but yeah, there doesn't, seem to be, there doesn't seem to be a lot of build videos anymore, which are the ones I enjoyed. But um, as far as like channels that I really enjoy watching, or I like as my main sort of carpentry, I really like Mike Alm because of the pattern plywood, and that's what started me off on the old pattern plywood stuff that I do. Yeah. Uh, Mike Farrington, I just like his style again. Um, what does he do? Is he just, what sort of builds is he doing? Is he... So he's done a bit of uh, Kumiko recently, which Com- is something I want to try this year. Kumiko, What's... Japanese. Uh, so they do like the Japanese panels with all the crosses and the stars and all that. Okay. It'll be in that reference book you got behind you. Oh, that, that, the Japanese joinery. You can tell I've read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I quite liked his stuff. Um, I like uh, Keith Johnson. Um, he's done some really cool builds recently. I think it's like Chaos Swords, his channel's called. Uh, Nick Sawyer. Oh, yeah, I know that guy. Yeah, he does some interesting stuff. Yeah, Nick Sawyer's Carpentry. I mean, he's only been doing it a few years, Nick, as well, from what I, I gather. And his stuff is just this out of this world good. Um, H Carpenter for the, all the Japanese joinery um, things. But yeah, there's quite a few that I really like and, you know, for the joinery side of things. And then obviously there are a few channels I watch now which are becoming more of a entertainment, as you say, because, but now, you know, there's that saying that everything's content and I get that. But, uh, you know, and I film stuff. If I'm making something for a client, I will film it and turn that into a video as well as. But at the same time, you know, and you do build things for the sake of building a video, but, you know, I'm trying to get away from that because, but it's hard when you, you can build so much. And, you know, it, it's very hard. And I think that's why, especially the ones that are trying to make a living out of it these days. Yeah. Or recently made the jump into full time. It is becoming more of a, there's loads of gimmicks and stuff in there, which I'm never going down that route. Good. Oh, that's good to him. I'm not. Well, it's not good. It's, you can go down whatever you like, but yeah. If when I start putting stuff out there, I'm just gonna. It's gonna be solely, you know, mainly. Obviously, your personality comes across, but it's gonna be mainly about the woodworking, custom carpentry, slash, yeah. trying to give as much value as you can in the video, showing how you've done it and what way you've done yeah, it. I mean, it means something. It does work with some people, don't get me wrong, but for me, it's not... I mean, I might make the odd joke or whatever, or be a bit of a clown when you want to be little bits for a split second, but that's a... a you know, I want to be... I don't know. That's just who you want. Just, you want to be you. <laughs> yeah, I do. But, you know, with the YouTube channels, the other thing is, like, reference books. I mean, you showed me earlier, and I've just quickly saw you've got the Japanese... I mean, I've got a full book, a full rack of reference books over the last few years. Yeah, the Japanese... The complete Japanese joinery book. Yeah. Um, again, any links to products or books, I'll leave. <coughs> Excuse me. I will leave links in the descriptions uh, below of any you know books, courses, channels that we talk about, so I, I, everyone can go uh, check these out. But yeah, that Japanese journey book is a really good one. I've got a couple of uh, roof books. I don't mean I don't do roofs because of my shoulder, but I've got a couple of roof books, um, stair books, you know, bandsaw books. Um, I, I like I, I like old school Rob and to use the you know use the internet for everything these days I like to have the old school and I mean apart from like Japanese do you have a lot of reference books or any books you particularly no, just, recommend just that one that I fur, I got who did I get that off I see what's his name um, Dusty Lumber oh from, yeah I see him just like Flicking through the page, just making some cool joints on his, uh, just on his shorts, his YouTube shorts, and I was like, oh, that looks like a good book. I've got it. I've you've done a couple out there, but I feel like I need. Um, you can, I mean, you can do it with a hammer and chisel, but I, I feel like I need like a band saw, a table saw, to do all them joints. Uh, 
yeah, I feel like I need a few more, a few more tools to do them. You see, you see there. You see, if you actually go watch that H Carpenter on YouTube, uh, this is an aging guy that just basically has a looks like very much a shack um, in the middle of nowhere, and he does these insane Japanese joinery joints, and he does them all with hand tools. Oh well, then I don't. I don't need that. <laughs> that's a, no, that's no. a limiting belief there. Yeah, so I mean, everyone, yeah, that's really good. I mean, so other than that, I mean, courses, training days. I mean, I've already done. I did one training day about three years ago, which was a Rubio Monaco training day. Even though I've been using it already, I thought I'll go along see if I can learn something. Um, I did. I learned about one new product that day, so <laughs> it was worth it in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, since sort of like college days, I've not actually done any. I mean, I do. We have training days in the sense of there's um. I still do demo days across the UK. I go to them every year to see the new products, play with the new toys, um, see which, you know, if, it, if I want the new products. Because just as a new festival product doesn't mean I want it, but there has been some improvements on last last year on the year, uh, like the um, Microsoft Rail Gauge Square. There's a big improvement on that, so I've bought that kit. Um, so I've, I've been to the festival days and stuff, but I mean, have you done any courses or? Yeah, I've done one. New course or what? I've done one course in the last year, which uh, was uh, packed with information. I think it was three hundred dollars. I think I paid a hundred US dollars for it because it was on Black Friday, and it was the Blacktail Studio course. So, um, that course, I mean, that comes course. I mean, I've been looking at like, the one from Blacktail Studios on the River Tables. You know, what, what's it actually like then? So, yeah, what he's done with, obviously, I think he's been building river tables about 10 years. And he, he's distilled it down into around three hours of content and into about 20 to 25 modules. So some some are like five minutes long, some are like 10 minutes long, some are two minutes long. And he just takes you all the way from the start to the finish. And he's he's definitely saved me thousands already. You know, with just like the little tips and tricks of how to do it, when he does it, how he mixes his resin, he puts the fans on, when to re-pour, like the tackiness. You know, it's just, it honestly takes you through step by step and it was it was well worth the money. Definitely. I can well. imagine because, I mean, I, I've just poured a river table last night, uh, which is about £400 worth of epoxy. Um, and I, I, everything I've done, I've learned via mainly off Blacktail Studios, off his just his normal videos. Yeah. Um, and it, it is a very nervous moment because you're like, am I about to pour 400 quid's worth of resin onto the floor? Yeah. Effectively. Um, or you don't, yeah, or you don't like, do it right and it cracks or starts warping yeah. or, yeah, so much. So that's, I might have to have a look at that then because I do think that investing in yourself in courses, you know, everyone, I do think courses, training days, reference books, I do think it's a worthwhile investment. So don't just invest in your tools. Invest in yourself, I think, is probably a good thing to say about this episode as a, as a wrap-up. Amazing. Cool. All right, thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave a comment and subscribe. We are on all major platforms. Terrell, okay. Thank you.